Hey guys, so you have been sending in your questions to me for the past couple of weeks about interviews and I'm going to be going through and answering them now. But before I do, I've got a couple of things I'd like to point out. One, these are my opinions, they do not represent uh, those of the University, uh, St Peter's College or the Physics Department. These are just my answers to these questions. Two, there's already a lot of information available online about interviews and in particular I recommend you check out the Central Oxford website which is ox.ac.uk and college websites and departmental websites but also the studentroom.com as you have a lot of people logging on and telling you about their interview experience, what kind of questions they were asked, um, their experiences over the couple of days they were in Oxford which is a valuable resource to check out. Three, if you want subject specific advice, then I recommend you check out my college's YouTube channel, which is SPC Oxford. On there we have interviews with people doing a range of subjects, and in those interviews they talk about um, their recommendations for how to prepare for interviews, and just generally what advice they would give to somebody who's thinking of applying. Um, so SPC Oxford, check those out, which I highly recommend you do, They're, a lot of them are very informative, particularly the one for medicine. It was done by a very good friend of mine, and he gives some very good advice. Right, now that's over and done with, let's get on and answer the questions. This video is going to be split into two sections. The main section is going to be general questions about interviews, and then the second section is going to be physics specific uh, questions. I do physics, and a lot of people who are asking questions were asking about the physics course, but I'm going to be putting that in a little second section at the end of the video. How did you prepare for your interview, slash what do you think is the best way to prepare? I think the best way to prepare for an interview is to get mock interviews, if at all possible. So when I uh, was preparing for my interview, I had a mock interview with my maths teacher and a mock interview with my uh, physics teacher. Neither of which had been to Oxbridge, and as far as I know, neither of which had done an Oxbridge interview, but th they knew the format and they knew the kind of questions to ask. It's extremely valuable just to get basic mistakes out of the way um, and just so you kind of get used to a slightly more formal setting in which to do, the, well, a slightly more formal setting in which to talk about your subject, I guess. So that's my first bit of advice. My second bit of advice would be to try and get as much information as possible about the kind of questions you can be expected to answer. So a good resource for that is the student room, um, or alternatively you can look at my videos on my channel about my physics interview questions. Now I should stress about this, the idea is not to memorise answers about questions, or even to memorise a set sort of way of answering the question. The, the point is to get used to the style of question and to realise that the important thing is not getting the answer correct, but to explain how you're thinking. And to look at these questions that you've been given, you know, um, excuse me, that other people have been given, that you've looked up, and to say, right, well, if I was to answer that, I would say this, then this, then this, but maybe not this because. And just talk out loud, just, just practice talking out loud. Just to emphasise again, the idea is not to memorise the answer, the idea is to get used to the style of question and to practice the style of answering. The one I really struggle to comprehend is the why Oxford question. I mean, if you give too little info, then you seem uninformed and naive. Yet too much info, and you'll probably say something that isn't true, or indeed say too much and seem naive again. How do you answer that? It's not a question that you should really be too worried about, to be honest. Um, I was asked the why Oxford question, I think, twice, though maybe just once. It was five years ago. And um, it was a throwaway question at the start of the interview. They weren't really interested in my response. It was something really to break the ice and to, and to start the conversation. Um, what I said, uh, which I think is a, a reasonable answer, is that I knew that I wanted the best education experience possible. I knew that Oxford has a very high, good reputation for teaching, has fantastic resources at disposal, such as you know, libraries. The tutorial system in particular is a great advantage because it means that I get one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one teaching with fantastic academic minds in the subject. And it just means I'm going to get a better education than anyone else, and that's what I'm interested in. And also there are other advantages, like I visited the city, liked it, I really like the idea of the collegiate system, it's good for sport, that kind of stuff. It's not something that you should be too stressed about, because it's not a question that they're going to be basing whether you get in or not on, I don't think. I, I, should, I should clarify, yeah, I'm a scientist, this is true certainly for science subjects. I cannot say for 100% that it's true for humanities subjects, but from talking to other people, I don't think it's anywhere near as important as the academic questions. Interviews, fun, scary, awkward. Is anyone in the room for making friends? Can you go through basically what you did there for the whole time you were there? Fun, scary, or awkward? Um, a, a bit of all of them, to be honest. Um, not so much awkward. Um, and definitely scary at points. But the whole experience was fun, actually. Because um, when you're there for interview, you're there with everybody else that's going to be interviewed for that subject. And it's a chance to meet people that are really passionate and interested about a subject that you're really passionate and interested about. Uh, and that wasn't something I'd 
experience too much up to that point. There were a couple of people in my school that were that were into physics and I really liked it, but um, to be surrounded by people that you know that was what they wanted to do at university level um, was something new, and it was great to meet people like that with all these shared interests. Plus, the whole experience is kind of fun. So, um, to, to, to say what I did when I was there, I got dropped off by my parents, um, get signed in at the the lodge in uh, the college taken up to my room, shown where it was, and then shown where the JCR was, pointed out that there's a notice board. You check the notice board, uh, which will tell you when your interviews are, where they are, and when you can go home. So they'll post on the notice board, you can definitely go home now, uh, because some people are kept back for extra interviews and stuff like that. But once that was out of the way, um, obviously there were the interviews to be done, but there was a lot of time sat in the JCR and just talking to people, like I say, trying to, you know, meeting these people with similar interests, which was really cool. Uh, in the evening that I was there, we watched a film. We were, we were taking it in terms to point out scientific inaccuracies in Armageddon, which, to be honest, is not hard. And we also did a pub quiz, which was fun. But yeah, there's no denying that uh, some of the interview process is a little bit scary. Uh, because you know, well, at least you think you know, that at this point this is one of the most important things you've done in your life, and, and you, you're so terrified of messing it up. And in a way, that's the worst thing you could think, because... The trick to doing well in interviews is to relax and not concentrate on how important this is for you. Um, because if you're stressed and if you're all tensed up, you're never going to perform at your best. The way to perform at your best is to be relaxed and just to, to explain the way you think clearly and logically. And it's difficult to do that if you're very stressed. So that's that's the number one thing. And that was actually what the interview hub was there to do. They're there to try and calm you down and make you as comfortable as possible. And ultimately, they're never going to make the, the process completely stress-free. but but they did a really good job of doing that. In the interview, did they expect you to have done your own independent work of your subject? Did they question your knowledge of the subject and what tone are they held in, i.e. formal or whatever? Also, are there multiple interviews? Okay, so there's quite a few questions there. Um, starting with the last one, are there multiple interviews? Yes, there are. Almost everybody will have at least two interviews, anything between two and six. Um, sometimes more. It depends if you are held back for more interviews, which is not necessarily a bad thing, equally not necessarily a good thing. It's, it's something that you really shouldn't read into too much if you are given extra interviews. Um, because there's no way of telling what it means. And equally, if you're only allocated two interviews, don't think that's a bad thing, they don't want to talk to you. Uh, sometimes it's just standard practice. For instance, I think chemistry at St Peter's, they do two interviews as standard. As for what tone they're held in, um, they are reasonably formal. It's not an informal chat over a table or something like that. It is reasonably formal, but not excessively so. Um, when I did my interviews, it was two professors, or one professor and a postdoc, I think, um, just sat across a table, giving me these problems and sometimes I'll have a piece of paper to you know scribble diagrams or something on to help my argument um, and it wasn't like we were sat on opposite sides of a room with a, with a great vast chasm between us or something like some people seem to have this impression you're going to be facing like four professors or something and then there's one chair in the middle of the room From my experience not like that I can't say that it won't be like that but I'm pretty sure it won't be and lastly do they expect you to have done your own research into your subject they won't expect it um, they will expect you to have taken your understanding of it beyond the syllabus in that, f for example, for physics, I've read New Scientist, I keep up to date in the news, in the physics world, I've read books like, you know, In Search of Schrodinger's Cat and The Elegant Universe and things like that, which definitely take physics beyond the, the A-level syllabus, but I wouldn't class as individual research. If you do have the opportunity to do individual research, then they will love it. That, that's a fantastic thing to be able to do. It's a great thing to be able to talk about potentially in the interview. Uh, you know, if you put it in your personal statement, they'll probably pick you up on it and ask you questions about it. So, not expected, but if you can do it, it's a great bonus. I read in the Oxford website that for overseas students who would not probably be in a situation to attend an interview in Oxford, an interview would be done through phone or Skype. They also mentioned those interviews are not guaranteed. Is it better to attend an interview in person? Now, there's no guarantee that you'd be able to get an interview via Skype on the phone. Though, I don't think I've heard of anybody being denied one. Um, I've, as far as I know, and I'd like to stress that I'm not an expert in this, I'm just an undergraduate who's gone through interviews and is currently helping with interviews and is interested in access. As far as I know, it's very likely that you'll be given an interview via Skype or whatever, and colleges put aside rooms for a day, you know, where they'll, they'll do those kind of interviews. Is it better to attend an interview in person? I would say yes, if at all possible. Because it... Um, I suppose on one level it shows that you're a bit more committed, that you, know, that you, that you wanted to be there, you didn't just want to do the easy thing and do it by Skype. Though obviously for many people that's just going to be impossible, either sort of logistically or financially. Um, but if at all possible, do try and come to the interview because it means that you can give a better account of yourself, you can give more of an impression of your feelings on the subject and, and um, 
hopefully how passionate you are about the subject, which isn't the easiest thing to do via the phone line. And also it makes things like uh, do questions, say via, with, with diagrams or whatever, um, they can ask those kind of questions and I think those are probably more instructive, the idea when you can show you're working for something like maths or physics for instance. So yeah, if you can come to the interview, do try to, but it isn't going to be possible all the time. What should I wear for the interview? Now the official Oxford guideline is that you should wear whatever makes you feel comfortable and that is definitely true. What I wore for my interview uh, was uh, a lounge suit, you know, just a typical suit. Um, and I think most people who were taking interviews also did the same. Um, helping out with interviews this time at St Peter's, people seem to be more relaxed and um, wearing, for the guys, if not a suit, um, which quite a lot of people still do, um, then there's a pair of smart trousers and a shirt for a girl, something like a pencil shirt and a white blouse or, you know, something like I don't, I don't know girls' clothing, but something that's smart, the kind of thing I guess you'd wear to an office, maybe. But the important thing is, as I would say, to be comfortable. They are not going to judge you based on what you turn up to the interview in. I'd recommend not turning up in something completely casual, like baggy jeans and a hoodie or something, because much as they're not going to judge your performance of the subject based on what you wear, it's the kind of thing that can form a subconscious impression on people. So I would recommend that you dress smart, and for the guys that means suit, for the girls that means, yeah, the kind of, kind of office wear, I guess. Do you get an interview before the offer or vice versa, then application to colleges? So the order goes uh, UCAS application, turning up for interviews, possibly with subject specific tests in between, finding out result of interview, and being given an offer. And lastly, in this section, for all the people asking about medicine, highly recommend you check out the interview with medical students on the SPC Oxford YouTube channel. I really do because it's a fantastic interview, it gives you a great insight into the life of a medical student and also um, my friend Joe gives some really good advice about applying. So now to move on to the physics little subsection of the video. If you want to study a mathematical subjects such as engineering, physics or Comsky, would the interviewers quiz you into why you dropped further maths at AS and would not do A2 further maths to make you seem like a weaker candidate than one who has done AS further maths? I think you might be in A2 further math. In short, if you can do further maths to A2, definitely, definitely do. Because, for the first thing, a lot of people who will be applying for these courses will have further maths and it will make you a weaker candidate. Because of the second point, which is that the courses here in the scientific subjects like physics and maths and, and Comsky and stuff like that are incredibly mathematically based. So physics is essentially just a maths degree with application. So by not doing further maths, you're not only putting yourself at a disadvantage while applying, but also putting yourself at a disadvantage whilst on the course. So if at all possible, I really, really recommend that you um, do do it way too. It is the kind of thing they could ask you about in interviews, though not the first thing they probably would. Potential interview question, they're not a likely one. How much will be about your personal statement and how much about you delivering the goods? I like that phrase. Is there a maths slash physics question split? Are there any questions about current events in the physics world that are not mentioned in your personal statement? Do they expect you to know any particularly obscure piece of physics or is it just mainstream general A-level slash basic cosmology? Whew, that's a long question. Okay, so how much will be about your personal statement and how much about delivering the goods? Probably my new favourite phrase. Mostly all about delivering the goods. Um, I, had a, I had a whole interview about my personal statement, though that was because I didn't have a practical workbook, which a whole other interview was meant to be based on. Um, in all the other interviews, I wasn't taught quizzed on my personal statement at all. Uh, in fact, <coughs> I can't remember who it was, I think it was a mathematician who asked his tutors what did you think of my personal statements once he got in and they just went, oh, we didn't read them. So, and then I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that your personal statements are not important, that was one particular case, but um, the interviews are all about your ability to do the subject for physics um, and one of my friends was actually explicitly told that when they applied to Keeble College. It's all about your ability to do maths, to be able to demonstrate the way that you think. So your personal statement is going to be very important for other universities, but not so much when you're applying here. Is there a maths physics question split? Uh, yes, well I had um, one interview in Jesus College about maths, one interview in Jesus College about physics, and then I had one interview at St Peter's, which was a mix of the two, and the questions in that interview were, were quite clearly delineated between physics and maths. Um, in practice, at university level, actually, there's very little distinction between the two. But at interviews, yes, there will be a, a sort of cluster or a whole interview on maths questions, and the same for physics questions. Are there any questions about sort of events in the physics world? Uh, I didn't have any, although in one of my interviews they asked me a question about telescopes, and they mentioned. Uh, oh no, no, I think I brought it up actually about this the extremely large telescope which was being constructed, I think, at that point in South America. 
um, which there was sort of an idle distraction for them for about five seconds. Um, I didn't get asked any questions about it. It's not the kind of thing which I'd expect anybody uh, really to be asked any questions about. They're not going to expect you to keep up to date with the latest publications in Nature or anything like that. And lastly, do they expect you to know any particularly obscure piece of knowledge or is it just mainstream physics? It is just mainstream physics. Uh, the typical way that an interview will work is that they will take knowledge which is basic physics that you will know from AS and then apply it to an unusual situation or give you a new piece of information, ask you to combine it with the um, y your basic understanding and then apply that to a situation or reconcile that new piece of information with your understanding. So th the important thing isn't quite so much what you know because at your stage of development you do not know that much about physics. No offence, but you, you, know, you haven't done a degree in it yet. They're interested not in what you know, but in what you can potentially know, and the way you think, and the way you learn, and the way that they can probe that is to give you new pieces of information, and to see how you react to it. So, um, in that sense, I'd recommend that you revise your AS and A2, you know, whatever, syllabus, up to that point, and you are comfortable with all the material because they will take that as relatively assumed knowledge but they will not assume that you know any particularly obscure thing about Goldstone bosons or the Higgs boson or anything like that. Are the physics interviews based on knowledge of already learned topics or pure initiative? Now I touched on this in an answer to a previous question but the, <laughs> the truthful answer is it's a little bit of both. They will assume that you know basic physics and by that I mean uh, some mechanics, some calculus. Um, some circuit theory probably, that kind of level of, of physics. And they will ask you to use your initiative to apply that basic knowledge to new situations that you haven't encountered before, or to reconcile that basic knowledge with new information which they will give you. Um, or to use your information to disprove a particular theory that they might have. So in one question that I was asked, uh, I was asked to choose between two theories that the different professors had, one of which was right and one of which was wrong, and I had to explain why I chose that particular theory. The honest answer would be that it's a little bit of both, that the interview is, I, is based around your initiative, it's based around how you think, not what you know. Um, and that's something which you can only really improve by practicing going through interview questions and having practice interviews, like I said at the start of the video. Right, I think that's it. I hope that this was useful to you guys. Uh, I realise that some of you are going through interviews at the moment, and if that is the case, I wish you the very, very best of luck. Number one piece of advice, try and stay calm. Don't panic. Chill. You'll do a lot better, okay? Socialise with people. Chill in the JCR. Don't spend your whole time stuck in your room thinking about how scary the interview is going to be, because it probably won't be. And I hope that this is useful to people in the future. If you have any further questions about interviews, leave them as a comment on this video or send me a message, and I will do my best to get back to you.